FMS dropping another FCX24 ready to run, and it's not another scale rig. This one is the lemur. Sweet, I got the green one. Let's get this thing out of the box. And here's what you get in the box. The assembled crawler, instruction manual, radio system, battery pack, charger, some shock preload clips, and a cross wrench. Okay, this is something new, something worth checking out. You know, when I saw the FCX24 logo on the box, I thought we were just gonna have a new body slapped on the old chassis that we've seen before, but they've made a bunch of changes here, stuff that we need to take a closer look at, starting off with the unlimited trail buggy style cage that we have on here. This is actually the whole frame setup as well. It's got a nice cage look to it. We've got Lexan body panels, and this buggy is actually available in three different styles. I really like the green version. I think it's got a cool looking lemur, angry lemur, look at that, on the side panels. The green is definitely on point in my opinion. Uh, Lexan drivers inside, and their heads are even separate molded pieces. That's pretty cool. There's a light bar on top, which is functional. So that, I believe, is powered up by just hitting the bind button on the radio system. But the cage itself looks really good. I like that it's boat sided, so that'll help slide over the rocks. The battery is actually located in the uh, fuel cell in the rear, and it just pops on and off. And I was a little worried at first about it just snapping on and off, that maybe it would wear out. But they've got some tabs that I think will last a pretty long time. And then the box itself is pretty large. I mean, you might be able to fit a larger battery pack in there as well. But it comes with the, the standard 380 size LiPo pack. So the servos mounted to the axle on this rig, and they've got a servo saver in plastic lens links but I think people are gonna like this option and I bet you we'll see some rear steer builds as well. The two-in-one receiver speed controller combo is located under the hood and the radio system is the V3 version. So it's not the one with the little dip switches to adjust the braking, but it does have a channel three button to operate the two speed and it is a comfortable little radio. And then up front here, no LED lights in the front, but they've got this big bash bumper on here. And I think I'm just gonna ditch that. I don't think that's actually really necessary at all. But the nylon cage setup feels pretty sturdy. So I think they did a good job there. And then you can see the, uh, the skid plate underneath that we've seen before on the FCX. And that's because they have their two speed transmission in here, shiftable with the radio system with the channel three button. And that's got ball bearings on the inside. We've got slider drive shafts down to the portal axles so they carried those over. Everybody likes the portal axles because you got a lot of ground clearance and uh, those have metal gears in the portal housings, ball bearings throughout, CV drive shafts up front. So that's a pretty cool setup. And then they've got these large tires on here. So these are pretty big guys. At least they're mounted to beadlock wheels. Uh, there's no foam inserts on the inside, but those things are pretty tall. And now looking at the suspension on here, it looks like they just carried it over from the FCX24. They've got uh, links on the bottom, Y-Link up top, and then the shocks actually have a little bit of oil inside. So they've already put the O-rings in there. I took a shock apart. Maybe there's like two or three drops of oil inside. So that gives you some little bit of resistance in there. It takes away from the springiness. So I definitely like that but I'm thinking the wheelbase is a little too short on this and it doesn't need to be much longer in my opinion you don't want to high center the thing but I think a little bit longer would have really made this thing look good and probably work good as well it's got a lot of ground clearance to it a bit more than the blazer when I was uh, checking things out but I'm interested to see how it handles maybe the CG is going to be a little too high maybe not I think we just need to head outside and see how it performs All right, guys, I'm at one of my favorite spots for off-road action. You've seen it a bunch of my videos. We got the lemur going, and there's definitely some stuff we need to talk about.
So first up is traction. Uh, these tires don't have a lot of grip to them. They're basically like a street tread. The rubber is just way too soft and it just spins. And not only that, when you try to use the tire to grip something to maneuver it, it just winds up walking the front of the rig out from where you want to go. Definitely need some wheel speed if you want to get this thing up and over some uh, inclines. Next up, the, the suspension just seems very stiff. I think we needed a lighter spring on this and maybe the ability to change the shock angle. And I definitely think that longer wheelbase that I mentioned before would have helped it out. And that higher CG is definitely noticeable. Now the good stuff, well, the transmission is obviously one of the key features of this rig. It's got a nice slow crawl to it in first gear, switch it over to second, and then this thing's got some power. Watch that thing. It's, look at that speed, that's crazy. I like the clearance with the portal axles. Overall, I think it's fun if you manage your lines and take things nice and slow, but uh, I think it's gonna make a better project base for a lot of people. So I couldn't just leave things alone after I left the park and I came home and made a few little tweaks to the rig. Uh, got rid of that front bumper, that doesn't do anything. And then I put on the Petrazzi wheels and tires, which are weighted. Uh, they were on my BQ Blazer and the thing handles a lot better now. It's just that little bit of weight added with tires that actually have good traction to them. It is a lot more capable rig. So I think there's something to the lemur. I think it's gonna be a fun vehicle. Like I said, you know, at the park, I think it's gonna be a great project vehicle. And it's priced at like $145, $145.99. They probably would have liked to have seen it around like $139. I know that's not a huge difference, but uh, you know, a few bucks less since it's got some Lexan panels on it versus a full hard body. Although, you know, it's got a brand new cage on there. But I don't think I'm done with this yet. I kind of want to go and get the metal links off the FCX 18 and put it on this and it'll give it some more length to it and maybe lay down the shock so they feel a bit softer. I, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about the rig in the comment section below. You could of course find links in the video description and we'll see you back soon for some more RC driver videos.